This is the Lockhart Tactical Raven 556. Finally, it has arrived. I will be doing a thousand round review of these things to see how good they really are. Are they really the best under $2,000 option in Canada? Now, it's going to be three parts of this video. This first part explaining what it is. The second part, I will compare it to the Raven 9, show you what's different. And the third part will be how I plan to set it up. Now, what is this gun? Much like the Raven 9, the actual firearm part of it is this. This is the firearm. The magwell and the upper are not the firearm. So, that's why it says multi-caliber. So, this is a 5.56 rifle that uses direct impingement like an AR-15, but it is not an AR-15. None of the receiver or the bolt carrier groups or a couple other things are compatible with the AR-15. Some other things are. Now, it's kind of a long list to say what is compatible, but what is not compatible are the receivers, top or lower, the pins are proprietary. I believe these uh, mag release and the bolt catch are proprietary. The bolt carrier group is proprietary. And that's about it. Everything else can be AR-15. The parts inside the bolt carrier, the barrels, handguards are able to be uh, used with anything else. The one that comes with the rifle goes through uh, the magwell pins, and you can stick the pin in it. That keeps it nice and tight. You don't have to use this. If you buy the blank receivers, uh, you can just stick any handguard and any barrel nut on here. Now, one thing to note, I bought the upgrade kit of the 5.56. So I bought the Platinum Upgrade Kit. That did not come with another handguard. That only came with the upper, the magwell, and the internal parts. It did not come with the handguard. Just forewarning. So if you're like me and you've already nicked up your handguard a little bit, you won't get a new one. Now, one thing to mention, and I will get in it in a second, is the charging handle. This does take a top charging handle, just like the Raven 9. But it is decidedly different, and I will do a comparison. I will show the difference between the two. Now, it also has the side charging handle that you can stick on the left or on the right. And of course, your AR buffer tubes and the like. Now, I'm going to get this taken apart such that you can see what the internals are like, and then I will do a comparison to it. Here is the Raven 9 and the Raven 556. Now, I'm not going to show you too much of the lower. It's the same lower that I've shown before. Only difference is it has this magwell. Um, one thing that I will note is that the first couple of times you take on and off the magwell, it is extraordinarily tight, and the pins need a lot of uh, influencing to put through. Um, it is very difficult, but after, I, I don't know, I, three or four times it should ease up just like the Raven 9. Now, these are the two rifles. So, first, this is the bolt carrier group Now, of the Raven 9. Now, as you can see, it is much fuller than the Raven 5.56 bolt. It is also much longer, or the much shorter, rather. The Raven 9 is shorter. Now, the reason for this is... Probably design, as in necessity, but also maybe FRT. Now, this 
takes AR-15 charging handles. The Raven 9 Bolt Carrier Group allows for the use of AR-15 charging handles. This is said AR-15 charging handle. It is a Blackhawk Omnivore latchless charging handle. Now I had to modify it slightly to fit the thickness of the receiver here, but it works. Now the problem is that it is not the right length. Now if you can see that bolt carrier group is uh, not or the front part that latches onto the bolt carrier group is not far forward enough. Now if I were to try to insert, I have to be the other way around. If I were to try and insert, you can see the latch is fully closed, but the bolt carrier group does not go all the way. It will not work at all. Now, what that means is that the Raven 9, as I will demonstrate here, the Raven 9 will take standard AR-15 charging handles. Some modification may be required, uh, but it will take them. And it will operate, it will function just fine. The same cannot be said of the 556. Because of that extra length, it requires a proprietary charging handle. Now, it's somewhere in between, leave, I'll put the picture up on screen, somewhere between a Stag-10, or it might be like a Stag-10 charging handle, but it's a bit smaller than an AR-10 charging handle. Now, I don't think anyone has tested any other charging handle. Um, that's not the Raven one. And the Raven one is 120 bucks. So, if you really want the top charging handle, it's 120 bucks extra. Um, personally, I'm not going to pay for it because I don't actually like top charging handles that much. Um, you know, I'm fine spending 50 bucks on an aftermarket one, but I'm not going to spend 120 bucks for something that I'm going to use occasionally. You know, it's to each their own. That's just my thinking. Now, as you can see, you have your direct impingement gas system here. Now I have to figure the exact uh, the exact way this uh, what each of the holes does, but you're supposed to back out the screws, rotate it all the way, and then click it 15 in. Take a couple shots. If things aren't cycling, do another couple clicks and continue the process until things cycle smoothly. I will talk more about the gas system uh, and its adjustment in the first shots video, which hopefully will be next week. But yeah, that is that. Also worth mentioning, this is a 223 wild barrel. So 5.56 or 223, either will work. And of course, you have your half by 28 threads. Now, an extra part of this video needs to talk about this bolt carrier group. Now, about a month ago, month and a bit ago, there was a post on Reddit about a guy's bolt carrier group getting cracked right here on both sides. Now, the rifle still functioned, but you don't want a cracked bolt carrier group. And apparently, at that point, at least two other people or was it four other people, had contacted Lockhart about, uh, Lockhart about that same issue. Now, the good news is that they heard the feedback, and they immediately started working on a fix, and they designed a fixable carrier group. It is slightly heavier and has a bit more, uh, doesn't have this curve, and it's got a bit more meat on the bones, so to speak. I'll put up a picture of their rendering on screen now. And they will be sending out that bolt carrier group free of charge to anyone that bought a Raven, which is fantastic. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to deal with something like that, but 
it's just a good thing that free of charge they do what they're supposed to do which you can't always take for granted in this day and age now last thing i want to mention and that is the handguard now it's the same handguard for the nine and the uh and the 556 five, and just like the nine mil man these lugs are fucking tight the Cerakote on them um, has to kind of wear off a bit. It's not much. We're talking like percents of a millimeter, but it makes it very difficult to get everything uh, in properly. So, that's it for the guts. Now I'm going to put everything back together, and I'm going to show the couple of setups that I will have going on it and this will be one of the setups now i don't know how well this scope is going to do on an actual rifle caliber as opposed to a 22 we'll see i'll test it out it's not going to be magnificent i don't think but i have hopes it'll hold zero that's all i'm really asking for now it did come with um, a PMAG. Now I want to bananify this PMAG, so I'm going to make this into a banana mag. And I also have these cross mags, 10 round pistol mags. Now I think with the pistol mags, this rifle looks awesome the way it does. Uh, I have a linear comp on the end of this bipod bcm grip um in terms of muzzle devices i think i'm going to try a muzzle brake i haven't decided yet we'll see or i mean i haven't decided which one specifically we'll see how that goes and i will also run this with a red dot the feiachi that has trusted me or i have trusted it for so long and it has given me great reliability thus far. Now, I also don't have a stock trigger in this. I will be using the, I believe it's the ALG ACT. It's basically just a mil spec trigger, but it's slightly lighter. It's a four and a half pound trigger pull, and it's smoother. It's crisper. It's basically the best stock mil spec trigger you can get. Um, I don't mind trigger techs, I don't love them. I don't think they're worth the price. Although, their new single stage was like $130 trigger. That is very interesting. And that would certainly compete with this thing. But that's a different topic of discussion. And one last thing I want to mention. Uh, I... Hold on. Where is it? All right. So the 9mm, the Raven 9, has this 8 ounce buffer spring now this is necessary for the raven 9 to work because it is blowback you cannot use this on the 556 five, you cannot use the 556 five, buffer buffer i guess uh in the nine millimeter uh it's too light so just a word of note when you're doing these conversions uh you know he says i'm gonna be honest the website says 30 seconds to convert anything. Maybe under absolute perfect scenarios. But you gotta be like running through training with this thing. Like those Vietnamese kids with the AKs that they learn in high school. Um, I think for most people, switching calibers, depending on how tight the uh, pins are, is a one to three minute job. But that's a nitpick. So... That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will have a first shots video on, uh, on this hopefully next week. We'll see how things go. I will be doing the red dot configuration first. I just wanted to show off this configuration because I think it's pretty cool. Um, as well, the BCL Bison. I'm waiting to receive it back from warranty. Um, there is certainly a story there, the sneak peek 
of it is that rifle is a true embodiment of the good, the bad, and the ugly. That will be quite a video when it comes out. So, if you don't want to miss that, subscribe, like, and share to help get more people interested in firearms, especially in Canada. We need it. Share videos that might help someone understand what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And thank you for continuously watching and supporting the channel.